beyond the internet for the internet. I work with code, uh, painting, and um, photography. So not all my everything I do is like an artist. Uh, actually, uh, if you guys are in Petrus and Macedon, you might have been seen. You have not, you might have seen me making it with Nugent six. Use art with open source tag. Please do if you do art or have a uh, software that is for art. Anyhow, this is not what this talk is about. Uh, over the last three years, I had the chance to um, teach and play around with teaching art using open source software. Uh, some of this was more workshop and experimental. The other one was more you know, your usual uh, classes. So the first one uh, was artistic programming. I use the word artistic to be able to put the word art in the Turkish version of the class. It's basically a coding workshop. Look at the twist. The idea was to, rather than making it about like learning art specifically, literally taking the 2D design class, a general introduction to 2D design class uh, curriculum, and try to have the students implement it with code. Uh, this was a four-day workshop, four full days, so 22 hours, um, at the local open source conference at Aksaray, and primarily aimed at college students. Uh, introduction to photography is what I'm currently teaching since September, and this is just your garden to introduction to photography, with a twist. Photography basics, so editing basics, and a little bit of a coding inside. Full semester university course, art elective for engineering and architecture students, so these are not fine art students, but some of them do do design. Um, it ends up being mostly third and fourth years. So, experiment one. Artistic programming. Uh, I was going to call these adventures, and I decided maybe, okay, let's not go that far. Um, so yeah, as I said, artistic programming introduction to do the programming with code. Four day long project that was part of the Academic Vision 2017 pre conference workshop program. Academic Vision is an um, open source uh, conference that has been held yearly in, um, in various places in Turkey. And one of the most important parts of it is that before the conference, there is a um, workshop series that is aimed at students. And these are usually free of charge. The students only need to like, pay for their stay at a um, like, uh, local dorm and um, at the, like, their travel uh, and like the year I was there there was like 2,000 students and like a lot of workshops mostly technical stuff but there was a few music and art related things as well so I had 19 people sign up 15 people showed up because undergrads uh, mostly uh, students of computer engineering because it's an open source conference they are the ones who are most interested although I had some other engineering students and a lecturer who was in the mix um, nobody had no pro any prior experience with art. I asked. Uh, so we started from the beginning. So presented the students with the basics of composition and color. Uh, I introduced them to coding as a tool integral to artistic practice. That was my primary goal: to have them use programming not as a programming tool or something to create tools necessarily, but to make art. So. They had to think of it like using brushes. Um, one example, one thing I did, for example, um, was first assignment was using two ellipses and making a composition out of those two ellipses. At this point, they didn't know if statements, they didn't know for groups. They just knew how to draw ellipses on processing code. Uh, we were using processing that code and p 5 The results, um, Students started to engage and experiment within the end of the first day. This was on like, I think either first day evening or the second day morning. And this was a student who had been done really coding prior. Uh, one thing that I was not expecting, a lot of them had very little experience in coding, so uh, we did actually end up doing covering the basics too. Uh, and by the time we were done, uh, sorry for the image quality by the way, uh, many of them had mastered the concepts by the end of the workshop. So one group was really going off by the end of the like, first day, another group really just did open up by the second day. And one straggling group finally relaxed 
to experiment and play around with um, at the end of four days after three days of trying to convince them that, you know, do your own thing, don't just copy what I'm doing. Uh, but yeah, these were the results. One student which I was not expecting went completely sidetracked. Um, instead of like doing artworks, uh, he started working with to play around with the idea of analyzing existing images. This is what, not what I was teaching, but that's where he went. Uh, so like here he's trying to, this is pretty simple. I mean, he was just trying to look into which color uh, out of RGB is dominant in uh, the painting in different pixels. So that was the experience. It was four days. Um, students were generally very enthusiastic and this is a curriculum that worked. And this is something I'm still continuing to work on, both as workshop and more teaching materials, but then I got sidetracked by the experiment too. Uh, since September 2018, I'm teaching at uh, ITU, uh, which is a local uh, technical university. Uh, the university is actually pretty one of the more high-ranking ones in Turkey, and um, it's mostly engineering programs and architecture programs. Uh, and I did actually approach them thinking that I would be teaching creative coding, but as it turns out, they had need they needed certain classes, and photography was the one I agreed to teach. I actually wasn't sure what I was doing until a week before the class and I realized, wait, I'm teaching art with open source and this is something I've been preaching for the past year and I'm just doing it. That happened. Uh, so yeah, that wasn't exactly planned. My goal was when I was pl planning this class was I'm going to be teaching photography basics, editing basics, and then <laughs> coding again. Um, full semester university course, course, this is not a workshop. Uh, this has been so far taught twice. Um, it's about 15 students to 17 students because Erasmus and drop, uh, people come in during the uh, ad drop period. Uh, art elective for a mix of engineering and architecture students mostly turned out fourth years because a lot of people want to take photography and um, uh, later years register for it. So that's how it works. Um, they have a variety of experience in uh, background in art and photography. Some were interested in art, didn't do it. The most experienced student I had was someone who had done photography for about six years as a hobby. Um, I have also students who said that they never taken a photograph before, including for social media. Okay. <coughs> or so they said. <coughs> uh, so what was existing course outcomes? This is a standard photography course. It's been uh, taught by multiple um, instructors in different ways. So my outcomes still had to fit the standard outcomes of an introduction, uh, introduction to photography course. I also put myself the goal, because I think that this is something that needs to be explored, that in, um, the students, when they finish the course, should be able to work theoretically doing photography jobs, or you know, that is relevant to their skills. So they should be able to work with open source software that I'm going to teach the class with, but at the same time, if they need to, they should be uh, able to use the industry standard software. Uh, and the third thing that I put myself as a goal was, it's not just important for them to be user of open source software. I can't teach them to like, you know, be developers, and I don't think that should be the goal, but maybe they should get uh, used to the idea that you can the tools are not ready-made things that are immutable. You can change them, or you can make your own. So there, uh, that was the point of having coding in there. And how do you achieve that is the question. Well, uh, this is a pinhole lens I made from an existing adapter, uh, um, cardboard, and aluminum. It looks... Uh, it looks a bit low light, so I do need to add more tape to it. Don't make the mistake I did. Just add more tape. Uh, anyhow, so this was one example I brought them as an example of like you know how does the camera work. All jokes aside, true. What I is actually not that. It's actually pretty obvious if you think about it. I mean, it's not like something that is reinventing the is that novel. What I am doing is rather than teaching them the software. I am trying to teach them the concepts so that they understand exactly what they are doing 
and what exactly the software is doing. So we start with composition and things they need to know in terms of aesthetics, composition and color and levels of that. These things did get confused and mixed up in the order of teaching, but like these were very clear structures that they have. We talked about how humans see the light because photography is not just some abstract thing that is documenting the reality. No, it is just um, uh, the way we see Nothing we see is exactly real. Not what the camera sees, not what we see with our eyes. It's always an interpretation of something. So first we discussed about how humans see the light, how we see the world, how our eyes work, things like that. We also discussed how the camera processes light. We discussed practical things like aperture and shutter speed, like how do you expose an image, how do you make sure that the image is well lit. Um, but we also discussed things like how does the sensor what is Bayer's filter for it, for example? Or that, um, how does an image uh, file store the data? Just in a simplistic way, I'm not talking about the uh, encryption or anything like that, or, uh, sorry, not encryption, the uh, compression algorithms. I'm talking about just the general idea that it is a canvas, it's still a grid, there's also vector images, and what are they? Simple things. And once we get there, we can discuss what the software does to the data. And we do all of this with processing, dark table, GIMP, and HIGIMP. So basically, rather than telling them, oh, uh, you need to make sure that uh, you, know, you don't have huge spikes in your um, end of your histograms, what we did is that we are going to, we, I did in front of them, I didn't have sent the code, but I, in front of them, started writing a code that's going to take the canvas, put the image in there, explaining what different parts of the code did, what's the function, what is a statement, what is for loop, etc. Showing them a pixel array, first taking an image, then making that image grayscale, then making a histogram of that image. So when they see a histogram, they understand exactly what is going on on any software, not just a specific one. And they also understand the difference between a logarithmic histogram and a linear histogram and why, what does that mean, and potentially why that has been chosen. So we also see tools like um, how do you deal with like what can software like what can neural code do that is not necessarily available in software. For example, we had a sample code that again you know I did write and show in front of them that they could use if they tried to. So far nobody did, but somebody still might. Uh, that is taking two images that are taken side by side and making an animal plot of it, a stereo image that is red and cyan. Uh, so just to demonstrate that you can create tools that are not necessarily available um, and that that is not something that is up there and out of reach. So after all of this information, obviously, once they start seeing basics of editing using a software, it was actually filled with a lot of background information about <coughs> why we were doing that edit and why we were choosing to do the edit that way and what maybe perhaps the algorithms or the what does the contrast do? What does the tone curve do? What does the blur do? They have at least some idea as to what is happening. After all of this, the students were given in the second half of the class, rather than small assignments, a final project that they are going to work on. The students had a series of keywords to choose from. Their task is to choose two keywords, build concept inspired by these keywords to create a series of images based on that. And the result? This was one student who decided to uh, picture two sides of the um, two uh, uh, different locations, public spaces. So a ferry station, uh, a bazaar, uh, uh, and a mall. At night, when it was isolated, and during the day when it was busy, and when he combined those two images to express the difference of the um, difference that the public, <coughs> the people being there and not being there makes. So this was used. Uh, maybe by using dark table and gimp. Another student decided to take the keywords dystopian, anti, and imagine a world where humanity had vanished. The student, oh, I forgot to put this in, um, actually ended up using Photoshop. Oh, by the way, uh, I taught this class in open source software. They were welcome to use any tools they wanted. Uh, another student ended up using, uh, you know, uh, noise and dark as keywords, and work, talk, um, did works that explore the chaos and noise of the city that is congested and um, filled with buildings. And what she was using was actually the reflections of skyscrapers 
that reflected even more buildings and uh, sometimes that one tree that was left isolated among everything else. Another student was working much in a more uh, autobiographic sort of way, sun and light, um, and she used that as an idea of how this um, sun sort of brings her positivity when she, it shines through every morning uh, from her window. Um, so she, for example, used Hugen. By the way, like some of the students did mix up open source and commercial software. Some students just went completely open source software once um, they realized uh, they pulled and that this was a useful tool. Uh, the last one, uh, the keyword was um, light and noise. And the student actually started working with caves near Istanbul that, was, that had early uh, human civilizations in it to reflect the difference between the modern city and the caves that were there. Uh, last student, just sun and blue, what if the um, sun was a blue star instead of being the yellow star that it is, and how that would change our world around it, and then completely on a sci-fi side. Dr. Blanken on this case. Of course, when we start teaching class, rather than a workshop, not everything goes according to plan. Like, you might have to not give um, an assignment due April 2nd, because a dark table has a very Humorous, uh, April Fool joke in it that shows up when you open your um, software in April first. Can you please not have your flow breaking <laughs> jokes in the future? I beg you. It's, the students are already having a hard time. <laughs> just saying. I appreciate it. I think it's funny, but at the same time, it's just like. Uh, Is there an option to turn it off now?